common thing to draw on Fusion is some type of container or mold that you can print out on your 3D printer. A good example of this is a mold I've designed in Fusion for dumbbell weights for my home gym. And there are a lot of use cases in which you may want to know what the volume of the container that you're drawing is. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show you in this video how you can find what the volume of the inside of a container is. So first we're going to hop on Fusion. I'm going to draw up a quick box just to show you a simple example. And then I'll open up my dumbbell mold to show you a more complicated example because it can be a little confusing on how you select your container in order to figure out the volume of the mold. We have two bodies of the container. If I take this one off, here is my cube with one and a half millimeter walls. And on the inside, I should have a 20 by 20 cube. And you can see 20 by 20. Let's find the volume of the inside of it. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna just show you, this is a container, it's hollow. We're going to go to create, and we're going to go to boundary fill. Now you wanna select the parts of the container. And as you can see, there's these three check boxes now. And these are the cells that we could fill with a material. So these cells get a little confusing depending on the drawing. Um, sometimes they uh, are not, they don't really change what's highlighted when you hover over them. Um, I found that, you know, the middle I know is going to fill this cube, but sometimes you have to go back in after you select your cells and change the cells to find exactly what you want to fill within the part. So another common thing is sometimes you go to click a checkbox and you can see this bottom one checked when I was trying to click this. And oh, the way to get around that is by just rotating the part a little bit and then you're able to click the correct checkbox. We are going to hit okay and it's gonna create a new body. And now as you can see, we have a object that is now filling the inside volume of this part. Now just to show you with better image, I can actually make this body water and then that shows you the difference in color of the object that is filling the container. So if I turn the visibility off, that is our fill object and it's contained within our container. So now that we know that, we could just right click our body four um, or whatever body number it turns out to be. And you can hit the properties. And as you can see, we have the volume 8,000 millimeters cubed, which is 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. So that's a great example of a simple container, but something a little more complicated in shape like this dumbbell weight mold. Uh, it gets a little more complex when you're selecting the cells. So let me bring up this project and show you how to do a fill on something a little more complicated like this. Here's the model for my dumbbell weight mold. Now this is scaled for a 20 pound weight, which is significantly larger than the one I was showing on camera, but the same principles apply. So like I said before, um, we want to do a boundary fill. Now for this, if I show you the two separate parts here, or if I pop the cap off the mold, when I'm filling this up with concrete, um, I'm only going to be able to fill up to this rim. Let me show you the bottom of the cap here. As you can see, there is a lip on this cap, so I'm not gonna be able to fill that space with concrete when I'm pouring it. So in order to get an accurate measurement of the volume, which is the inside of this container up to this lip, what you're gonna do is you're going to select the main part of the mold as your tool, but you could also use a construction plane, which is what I use to cut my cap off as another part of the tool. So now I selected that as well. And now you can see I have two check boxes. That doesn't look right because I've done this before and I know that does not look right. One thing I found is that you actually have to select by dragging 
over the whole design. Now look at how many checkboxes you have for cells. It changed significantly. Why does that happen? I don't know. I'm not a fusion expert, but I'm just letting you know that this is why it's a little more complicated with something that's shaped this way. But either way, I can go to select cells now. And just after playing around with this, I know that you know these cells, the check boxes that look like they're more inside, you know, looking at it from the top, we can see that these look like they're more inside. Those are gonna be the cells that I wanna fill with my solid. Now, you know, I was trying to select one and it was selecting the bottom one instead. So, you know, rotate the part until you can click the proper one. It's a little weird, but it is what it is. Now I'll hit done. As you can see, I'll turn that plane off. There is a material that is filling my mold now. And let me change the color of it just for the example. We're gonna make this water again. So as you can see, got something that perfectly fills the mold. So we can do a right click on the body properties and you can see that the volume, so for this project, my main unit is inches. So it gives me my volume as 239.317 inches cubed. Say I wanted it in millimeters. I can click out of that. You can go to document settings and you can change the active units and you can switch that to millimeters. And then you can do the same thing, right click properties and then boom. 3.922 e to the sixth uh, millimeters cubed. So that's it. It's pretty easy to determine the volume of a mold or a container in Fusion. There are a few little nuances though that we covered there. So be careful when you're selecting your part and make sure that you are getting all the cells that you need to actually fill the part. Um, you know, it's good to turn the visibility of your container or your mold off so that you can make sure that the new solid that's created with the boundary fill is actually filling the complete uh, volume of what you're trying to measure. Thanks for watching, subscribe, and see you next time.